Hey loves, my name is Afani and this is the Afani Be Gentle podcast. Today's episode is all about entrepreneurship. Now, I know you may be thinking, who the hell are you to talk about entrepreneurship? What have you started? Do you have a successful business? Well, the answer is yes. During the first part of COVID, I started to get very antsy. Although I was working on projects around the house, like painting the kids' rooms or building our pantry with my sweetheart, I knew that I wanted to invest my time in something that I was truly passionate about. I knew I loved makeup, but I never found products that truly connected with me. When I sat back and thought about what I truly was passionate about, I thought cosmetics, and that's when I thought about starting Gentle Beauty. I learned so much about starting a business and running a business over the last year and a half. Building a brand from the ground up is no joke. There were many nights where I was up for over 24 hours because I wanted to launch by a certain date, so there were certain deadlines that I had to reach in order to meet my launch date. I was stressed, (laughs) y'all. I did everything from designing the packaging to making the actual lip products. It was a lot of work, but it was well worth it. It's so satisfying to create a product that everyone genuinely loves and continues to come back for more. So in this episode, I'll walk you through some of the steps that I took from coming up with my brand name to launch day. The first thing I had to do was figure out what my brand was going to focus on. After I figured that out, I had to figure out the name. Now, luckily for me, my maiden last name is Gentle. And Gentle Beauty is exactly what I wanted my brand to be. A gentle cosmetic company that focused on creating vegan, organic, and cruelty cosmetics. After that, I applied for all the proper paperwork and filled out all my legal documents to ensure that I was covered. Then I came up with a color scheme. Luckily, I picked two colors that were my favorite, black and white, and then created the third color from a random color wheel. I used applications that would help me create my logo for my brand, such as Canva and Procreate. I think the toughest thing about creating a logo is creating a logo that represents your brand and your personality while being original and consistent. After I created my logo, I started to think about the type of products I wanted to create. How could these products help others? What was I bringing to the beauty industry that no one else had already done? What was I bringing to the industry that was innovative, original, and mind-blowing? When I created my YouTube channel, I started posting makeup related videos and people would always compliment three things, my brows, my lashes, and my lip combinations. So when I started Gentle Beauty, I knew that's where I wanted to start. I focused on lip products because I could never really find the perfect nude I could wear with or without a lip liner. I had friends who would ask me to do their makeup, but I never had the perfect nude that would complement their skin tone or perfectly pair with the look they requested. There was a need for nude lipsticks that complemented melanated people. I knew I would be the one to create the perfect nude for all shades of brown, so that's where I started. I knew that starting with lip products could be risky because at the time Kylie Jenner had blown up with her lip kits and people would probably look at me like, who is this girl making lip products by hand with no large following, no celebrity endorsements, and no real background in cosmetics. But I knew that my brand Gentle Beauty would make a difference, so I got to work. While researching ingredients that were cruelty-free, vegan, organic and beneficial to the skin that helps combat the dry weather that also held up during the summertime i also thought about how i wanted my packaging to look what i wanted my packaging to say how i wanted my packaging to feel because you can have the best products in the world but nine times out of ten if your packaging is crappy people will think twice about trying your products especially If your price tag screams luxury, but your packaging screams beauty supply store. Now, nothing is wrong with the beauty supply store, but she is not her and Gentle Beauty is not that. 
I wanted my brand to be a luxurious brand, so I invested in luxurious ingredients, luxurious components, as well as luxurious packaging. I wanted my brand to feel custom because it was custom. I knew exactly what I wanted my lip products to look like and feel like, so I began to create it. I created the layout for my package the same way I created my logo. It took some time, but I was able to perfect it while finding a supplier who would be able to bring my vision to life without robbing me for my coins. Although finding a supplier is not only a time consuming and expensive thing, it is definitely worth it, especially when you have a supplier who is willing to go above and beyond for you and is willing to fix any mistakes they make, if any. Once I figured out my lip products, I moved on to my lashes. I knew I wanted a decent range of lashes that would complement every type of eye and personality, but I had no idea where to start. So instead, I focused on what the packaging would look like. Because again, the presentation of the product is just as important as the product itself. I knew I wanted something that was durable, something that was never done before and something that could be reusable in any facet. The first thing that popped into my mind was bamboo. I wanted to make my lash packaging out of bamboo, but had no idea how or where to start looking for a supplier who would be willing to create something as intricate as a lash box made of bamboo. Once I sketched up my design, I began to look for a supplier who focused on creating bamboo products out of naturally sourced bamboo. To my surprise, I found a supplier within a matter of a week. I reached out to them and sent them my design and they sent me a mock, which took roughly a couple of weeks for me to get. After I received it, I made some changes and then they began to create my lash boxes. Now, I won't lie to you and say the process was easy or cheap. The majority of my time and energy, as well as a large sum of money, went into creating my lash boxes because they are organic bamboo. And I wanted to make sure that they were not only sturdy, but they lasted a lifetime. If these lash boxes could store my lashes and prolong their lifetime, it was well worth it. After I created my lash boxes, I began to focus on the lashes itself. Once I figured out all of that, then I reached out to another supplier to create my shipping boxes. I went on the same app I used to create all of my designs and created a 3D rendering of my shipping boxes and sent it to a supplier whom was able to bring my lash boxes to life. It was kind of hard to figure out what type of boxes I wanted to go with and the materials I wanted the boxes to be made out of because due to COVID, I couldn't physically be there to feel every material being used. And I had faith that everything would work out just fine and my products would be able to withstand the test of time. But at the same time, I was a bit nervous. While I was doing all this, I was also in school full time and taking care of Chandler, who wasn't able to fully attend school due to COVID. So at times, the only time I would have to work on my brand would be after midnight because that's all the time I could carve out, but I was determined to make it work. With my deadline quickly approaching, I began working on my website. I used Squarespace to create my website because for me, they were just really simple and easy. But there are so many different website creating platforms that you can use to create your website. I paid for my domain and began building my site. When you build a website, you have to focus on what makes the shopping experience easy and enjoyable because nobody wants to shop on a website that is unorganized and is complicated to find what you're looking for. So I began to construct my website based on the customer's point of view. I made sure that I didn't overwhelm people with products on each page. If you came to my site for lip products, I made a tab especially for you. If you came to my site for lashes, I made a tab especially for you. And if you came to my website to browse until something caught your eye, I made a few pages for you. I curated my website with the shopper in mind. I also wanted my website to have pictures of people other than myself wearing my products. I had my friend, who you guys also know as my wife, Connie, whom 
I've spoken about on my podcast before, model my lashes and lip products, as well as my sister-in-law, Dranisha. Because the three of us are different shades of melanin, I wanted to show that Gentle Beauty looks flawless on all skin colors. Eventually, I'll have people who are of lighter complexion than myself and deeper complexion than Drainisha model my products so that my website can be more inclusive. But because of COVID, it's a little bit more difficult than you may think. Plus, I have a few sisters whom I would love to have on my website modeling my products. But because we all live in different states, it's quite difficult to get everyone together so we can do a photo shoot. But rest assured, by the end of 2022, I plan on having all of us do a fire ass photo shoot for Gentle Beauty's second anniversary. So after I created the website layout, I went onto every page and specified each product. I ensured that I made everything as detailed as I could, even before taking pictures of the product. And I know that may sound ass backwards, but to me, I couldn't really wait until the cosmetic components and the packaging got to me to create the website because if I did, the website wouldn't have launched in time for my desired launch date, which was November 11th, 2020, 11, 11, 2020. So I worked backwards. I wasn't sure how many lip colors I wanted to launch. I just knew I wanted a certain type of lip color scheme and range. Once I started to create the lip colors, however, it became very clear that I needed a large range of colors because melanin is so vast and I would never want to launch a brand that was not inclusive. Although I was a small brand, I wanted to ensure that Gentle Beauty represented everyone. Too many times you see these big Fortune 500 cosmetic companies launch and later put out a statement about how they didn't mean to offend a certain ethnic group, aka black people, because they weren't inclusive enough and how they will do better and blah, 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 blah. And then you have brands such as Fenty Beauty, who launched with 50 different foundation shades. Rihanna came out swinging with her launch and ate everyone up. I saw Rihanna create Fenty Beauty and thought, wow, I aspire to be like her and really blow people out of the water with my creation and my inclusivity, which is exactly what I did. Once I started to tube my lip products, I began to feel a level of completion that I've never felt before. I knew that even if on launch day I only sold two units, those two people would be back for more and they would tell a friend to check out Gentle Beauty. I had the utmost respect and love for the people who I had already told I was creating a brand because I could feel the genuine support. Although my circle was small, I knew it was mighty. Connie flew out to my house and helped me make products in preparation for launch day, which was a huge blessing because if she had not come, I would have been pulling all-nighters for a good week or three, <laughs> trying to finish all of the work I had ahead of me. I knew because I had to make colors, I couldn't take pictures of the product and put them on the website, so I really had to push it to the limit. When I say we finished making a product the day before launch and then... I still had to do my hair and makeup and take pictures swatching every color on my lip and each lash on my eye. It got to the point where I told Connie, listen, <laughs> I can't put on another pair of lashes because I'm exhausted and I still had to edit the pictures and put them on the website. So there were about 10 more styles of lashes that I was like, well, on the next launch, <laughs> I have to launch these lashes. Your girl was drained. I took all of the pictures that I needed to take, which took about three hours. And when I went to my room with my laptop and stayed up until 4 a.m. on launch day, looking through over 2,000 pictures and editing pictures for each product, matching it to the names and posting them online, it was crazy. Shit, some of the names we were still coming up with as I was posting it online. It was a mess, but it was well worth it. Everyone knew my launch day was 11-11-2020 because by this time I had made an Instagram for my brand and a Twitter and had already started attracting attention and followers. I started posting a little behind the scenes and snippets of myself making products and whatnot. So I woke up at 8 a.m. 
I wasn't going to make the website live until 11, 11 a.m. And I had just enough time to finish editing pictures and put the final touches on my website before I made it public. I was nervous as hell. I won't even lie. I didn't know what to expect because I didn't know who wanted to actually purchase or who just wanted to be nosy. But when I finally made the website public, it was the best feeling in the world. It was almost as if I had been carrying my baby for nine months and I finally got to see her open her eyes for the very first time. The feedback I received was overwhelming. People were purchasing everything from lashes to lip products and I couldn't believe how much support I received. Although it was an amazing feeling, what was even more amazing was when people began to receive their packages and they would tag me on Instagram using my products and I, dare I say it, I slaved over those products. So it really made me feel really good that they really loved their products and they were really enjoying the best of the best from Gentle Beauty. Now, a year later, I still have that feeling every time someone places an order and they receive their package. They rave about my products and I am forever grateful for the support I receive from people I know as well as complete strangers. Now, although I told you about my experience and some of the steps I took to opening a business and becoming an entrepreneur, I do have a few do's and don'ts that I learned along the way with the help of my good friend Brittany and her significant other who have truly taught me a lot about business and continues to teach me and help me every step of the way. So here are the do's and don'ts. Do be clear about what you want to focus on, meaning if you want to start a business that focuses on clothing, don't start selling tech. Be niche specific. Don't limit yourself. I know that may sound like a contradiction, but if you want your brand to have a certain quality, be sure you fight for the quality you want, whether that be with packaging or product. Make sure your quality fits your standards because if you won't buy your own items, what the hell makes you think others will? Do learn financial literacy. When you start a business, if you are financially illiterate, it will almost be impossible to stay open for more than a year. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Be sure you set a budget for yourself and don't go over that budget when launching a brand because things can become extremely pricey and expensive and it can cause you to go bankrupt extremely fast. Do take a class on accounting and business. Now, although this may not be a necessity or a must, I do highly suggest it because if you make sure that you're not shorting yourself and you're aware of how a business should be ran, you will be straight. You'll learn about filing, taxes, and staying on top of your finances because nobody wants to be in trouble with the IRS. Don't use your business money to splurge and spoil yourself. Now, I know that's like, duh, who would do that? But trust me, it happens all the time. Pay yourself a salary so you can separate business and pleasure. I know a few businesses that have shut down because their business was making X amount of money and they decided to take Y amount of money out to take a luxury trip or buy a Chanel bag but didn't have the amount of money that they needed to re-up on the items that they sold before, which caused them to dig a really deep hole that they couldn't get out of. Do understand that business takes time to grow. Even though you may have 5,000 followers on Instagram, that doesn't mean you have 5,000 sales. Although there is a potential that that may happen, there are no guarantees in business. Don't depend on your family members to shop with you. I know this may sound harsh, but sometimes family is your biggest hater. They always expect that family discount and never want to pay you for what you're worth. Ask yourself this question. Do they go to Rihanna and say, hey girl, I've been listening to your music since Ponder Replay. Can I get a discount for supporting you all this time? No, they don't. So don't let them jip you out of your coins because y'all are family. They need to pay you what you're worth. Do factor in all your costs to create that one product prior to setting your price point. 
For example, if you're making a dress, you need to know how much the material will cost you. The thread, the needles, the scissors, the sewing machine, the packaging for the dress, shipping, gas to get the materials for the dress, as well as your time and price that dress accordingly. If your price for that dress breaks even with the same amount that cost you to make that dress, baby, you're not running a business. You're working for free. So you want to make sure that you make a profit on your products because you still have to replace all of that stuff when you have to make that dress again. Don't allow someone to talk you out of your dreams. Just because they can't do it doesn't mean you can't. Just because they don't know how to do it doesn't mean that their negativity should encourage you to give up on your aspirations. Honestly, loves, the do's and don'ts list for entrepreneurship and launching a brand, the list goes on and on. And when I say I've learned so much in my first year of business, I've literally learned so much. But I think the most important thing that I've learned is how resilient I am through it all. And I know that I can push through and do anything because I made it through my first year of business during one of the toughest pandemics the world has ever faced. Well, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed my little insight on creating a brand and becoming an entrepreneur. If you like this episode and actually want a part two, please feel free to hit me up at the Ifani Be Gentle podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening and spreading the word. I can't wait for you guys to hear next week's episode. But until then, my name is Ifani and this is the Ifani Be Gentle podcast. Besitos.